This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, state lawmakers took an initial vote today on a bipartisan bill seek that seeks to change how cannabis gummies are labeled. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more on what changes may soon be coming. Uh, what we saw today was um, my colleagues in both the Republican and Democratic parties uh, acknowledging this, and we had a strong over two-thirds vote to uh, move this forward and, and let these folks bring their products to market in a, in a safe way. Representative David Boyer of Poland sponsored LD 2147, which seeks to change the way cannabis-infused gummies are labeled by removing the current requirement that each individual gummy be stamped or embossed with a universal symbol for THC. Because what we were finding in the industry is, is a very um, haphazardly applied and perhaps inequitably applied standard, mostly because it's a subjective standard. It's, you look at a piece of candy and depending on the light and depending on the other environmental factors and depending maybe on the inspector's mood, it passes one day and then maybe it doesn't pass the next day. The bill passed the House by a vote of 102 to 36, passing the two-thirds majority requirement under an emergency bill. Uh, grateful for the strong vote from the Maine legislature today in support of Maine small businesses and uh, common sense and protecting public health and safety. Susan Meehan, the president of the Maine Cannabis Union, says safety was always top of mind during discussions of this bill. This is so important to us because it maintains the child safety features of our packaging. It maintains the tamper-proof packaging. It maintains the child resistance packaging. And it maintains the symbol and the other labeling requirements on the label. The Senate is scheduled to vote on the bill Tuesday. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Governor Mills unveiled a change package for her supplemental budget that allocates more than $100 million for investments in housing, child care and nursing homes. The proposal would fund a number of initiatives, including $22 million in one-time funding to create more than 150 new housing units in Maine, with additional funds to support purchases of mobile home parks by their residents. It also includes $12 million for one-time relief grants for child care providers, $23 million to support nursing facility reform, and $17.5 million for the Maine Emergency Management Agency for storm recovery. The supplemental budget, including the change package, is currently being worked on in the Appropriations Committee and would need to be voted on by the full legislature before the legislative session ends on April 17th. In other news tonight, a Palmyra woman died after being hit by a vehicle on Saturday. It happened just after 7.30 in the evening. Somerset County Chief Deputy Michael Mitchell says 45-year-old Heather Corey was crossing Route 2 from the Walmart parking lot towards the Dollar General when she was struck by a van driven by 80-year-old Gerald Heskett of Palmyra. Mitchell says Corey was taken to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Heskett was not injured in that crash. It remains under investigation, but Chief Deputy Mitchell says speed and alcohol were not factors in the incident. In other news, a $30 million bond for Maine Trails is one step closer to getting on the November ballot. On Friday evening, the, the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee unanimously voted to send the initiative to a full vote of the legislature. Advocates have been pushing for lawmakers to send the initiative to voters and say the influx of money will help almost every industry in the state. Because we've never had a trails bond in the state of Maine, we've never invested in our trails. Trails bring a lot of value to our economy, to the quality of life of Maine people, and the time has come when people recognize we could get even more value, more for our economy, more for our public health, get kids back out into the outdoors, create opportunities for seniors to have trails that are accessible nearby. Both chambers in the legislature would have to approve the initiative by a two-thirds majority in order for the question to appear on November's ballot. Well, winter weather can certainly wreak havoc on roadways, causing potholes and cracks along even the busiest of streets. But that same kind of damage is also inflicted on sidewalks, which creates an inconvenience and potential hazard to those who use wheelchairs. Our Doug Banks has more. Being able to step over a crack in the road or a pothole, it's just a luxury that a lot of people don't realize they have. 19-year-old K.O. Sumimtra has lived in Bangor for eight months, but has dealt with chronic pain, 
narcolepsy, and more his entire life. I'm what they call an ambulatory wheelchair user, and it just means that I have the ability to stand and walk for short amounts of time. Um, but using a wheelchair is the best option for my health and safety. K.O.'s trip down State Street to his physical therapy appointments are met with potholes and cracks in the pavement, an inconvenience that's only heightened by changes in the weather. I'm trying to get new a uh, new chair and new tires, but it's, it's a really difficult process. And so in the meantime, I just get trapped inside when it snows. K.O. states he's made two requests to the Public Works Department, one for a damaged sidewalk and another for electrical issues on a nearby intersection crosswalk. The department's director states the sidewalk has been fixed and the crosswalk is still under advisement. There are around 147 miles of sidewalks in Bangor. Combined with a main winter, it's unrealistic to believe every mile will be kept in pristine condition. But a new software system called C-Click Fix could help expedite that process. Would that help? the communication between the department and the residents? I'm hoping so. The new system will show those intermediate steps that somebody went out and inspected it and uh, yes, there is an issue. Another person was dispatched out and, and addressed the pothole. When we make things accessible for the people who need it the most, life becomes better for literally everyone. In Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. One week from today, the moon will completely block the face of the sun, creating a total eclipse. Parts of Maine are expected to be some of the few places in the world to witness complete totality. And Governor Mills was in Orono today to share safety tips and promote Maine as a premier eclipse destination. Our Grace Blanchard has more. Maine will once again have the best seats in the house for a historic total eclipse of the sun. On April 8th, more than half of Maine will be able to see the eclipse in full totality for more than three minutes. Governor Mills says her administration has been preparing for the event since last year. We expect tens of thousands of people to travel to Maine to enjoy this incredible event, and we couldn't be more excited to welcome them. The Maine Department of Transportation is urging people to be prepared for congested roads and to be mindful of Maine weather. This is mud season in Maine. And uh, if you don't know the road and haven't been on it several times already at this time of year, don't go on it. Officials from the Maine Emergency Management Agency suggest people pack paper maps as they expect cell towers to be overwhelmed. Traffic management plans, we have fuel shortage plans, so we have all these plans that we look at whenever there's an event like this to make sure that every base has been covered. The governor also stressed the importance of enjoying the spectacle safely. Regular sunglasses just won't cut it. Eclipse glasses block the sun's radiation from reaching your eyes and causing permanent damage. For more safety tips, visit our website, foxvangor.com. In Orno, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. So the buzz has already been building for weeks. It's just yeah. going to get more. There's just going to be more and more excitement swirling as now we're just within a few days of the event, really. Yeah, and we've been talking about it for so, so long yes, uh, since we're so close to that path. But yeah. you're really starting to hear that buzz really across the country now. People getting so, so excited mm -hmm. and a lot of people traveling long distances uh, to to be close to that path of totality. Yeah, and it's going to be sweeping right through our wonderful state. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast. All right, Beth and Peter, thank you. Happy Monday. Look at us. High temperatures today back near 50, pretty much area wide today. But cooler temperatures are on the way. Not so much tomorrow, but for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, along with a pretty big weather system on the way as well. For tonight, though, still some clouds out there. A couple of sprinkles and flurries cannot be ruled out this evening. It will not be a big deal. The bigger deal is over here. and This is a really big deal. A strong storm systems on the way for late Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. It is likely going to bring us some snow, and that snow could be locally heavy. Already, winter storm watches are posted for much of the region for snow, and again, potentially heavy snow, late Wednesday, throughout the day on Thursday, into Friday afternoon. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is mostly cloudy skies, a couple of sprinkles and flurries out there. With low temperatures down near 30, your full forecast is coming up. Beth and Peter. Alrighty, Jeff, thank you so much. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, April 1st, of course, the first day of opening open water fishing on lakes and ponds in Maine, as well as the first day prospective moose hunters can enter the lottery. We'll have that and more from the director of the Maine MDIFW and more coming up right after the break. Stay with us. Comfy, cozy, relaxing, not Joe. 
Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted TC Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems for all things basementy. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Maine is known for its vast outdoor recreation and for those who love to fish and hunt, well today is a very big day. April 1st kicks off the first day of open water fishing at lakes and ponds. According to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, many bodies of water are closed to all fishing for months to help protect and preserve certain populations of fish like the native wild brook trout. It's also a big day for moose hunters, as Mainers can now submit applications for a moose permit through the state's lottery system. According to the department, they are expecting more than 60,000 people to apply for the 4,000 available moose permits. April 1st still holds a special part for hunters and anglers, particularly fishermen. They know that's really kind of the start to the season. It's when they can start keeping fish. And also, if you love to hunt, you know you need to apply for your moose hunting permit, and you can start doing that on April 1st. A big day for sure. Well, according to Lottie, there are 360,000 licensed fishermen in Maine, and he says both the hunting and fishing industry are huge economic drivers for the state. Applications for the moose permit and fishing licenses are all available online, and for more information, you can visit our website, foxbangor.com. April 1st also marks April Fool's Day, and if you've been around Maine for a while, you probably know no one does pranks and gag gifts quite like Perry's Nut House in Belfast. The nearly 100-year-old novelty store has been supplying Mainers with tools for their own individual hijinks for decades. According to Perry's Nut House owner, Kent Darling, there was a sizable amount of customers who stocked up for April Fool's Day over the weekend. People come here specifically for that. They call ahead to see if we have them or not. And it's pretty funny, you know, uh, ink shooting pens, disappearing ink, like I said, uh, whoopee cushions and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. On April Fool's Day, the Nut House is getting ready for the upcoming summer season. They'll feature some new attractions like some locally made ice cream and a Perry's Nut House Museum. Lots to look forward to, and I'm sure lots of fun being had today. You probably get some good ideas walking through that place. Oh, I bet. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up in sports, Brewer Baseball is back after a 14-2 season last year, and they've got a brand new home field, too. We'll have that story right after the break. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. 
Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. A quality replacement window made with Fibrix material, which is twice as strong as vinyl, delivered through a stress-free process. Welcome to Renewal by Anderson. Get the peace of mind knowing Renewal by Anderson handles everything from start to finish. With one call, you'll enjoy working with the best people, exclusive products, and a superior process. It's the people. It's the process. It's the product. Call now to get our exceptional signature service. This fantastic offer is available only for a limited time. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street, or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe, Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We're going to start on the baseball diamond here over in Brewer. The Witches are gearing up for the season a year after going 14-2 and and finishing a top Class A North. And this year, they will actually play their home games in Brewer. The Witches outside for practice today for the first time ever on the brand new Hedrick Field turf. It's an all-turf complex that's going to benefit all sports, including the cross, field hockey, soccer, you name it. For baseball, though, they have had just one home game in Brewer in the past three years. In just over two weeks, on April 18th, they will open the season in Brewer at home against Oxford Hills, and the team and the community are just chomping at the bit to get out there. We've always had a great atmosphere at this field, and, um, you know, I mean, I'm sure the guys are going to be like me. I've been around baseball for a long time. Just the first day that we play an actual real game, the countable game on our field, I mean, everybody's just going to be bursting to get going. Um, when I was a freshman, we heard that we were going to get turf, and now that we finally have it, it's, it's such a blessing, and it's an awesome opportunity, and it's going to be a really fun year for my senior year just because turf is really fun, especially up here with all the snow and rain. As for the Witches, they have a lot of experience coming back from that team that went 14-2 last year, finished in first place, but they were upset in the first round by eventual Northern Maine champs Edward Little. A lot of Brewers pitching rotation and bullpen are coming back with a ton of varsity experience, including senior Grady Vanetta Stein, and they are excited for the opportunity to string some wins together once again. I think we're going to have a great pitching staff. We also have some um, new bats that came in that got stronger compared to last year, so... We're really um, excited and can't wait for this opportunity. All right, looking forward to get out there. Over to hockey now for the first time ever. A Maine girls all-star hockey team will be competing at the Tier 1 National Championships in Tampa, Florida this week. The Casco Bay Mariners U14 team defeated uh, Mid-Fairfield, Connecticut to win the New Englands and advance to Nationals. Maine will now play Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin in the pool play round. It is a tall order for the young ladies from Maine from all over the state, but the Mariners feel confident they can compete and win. So, I mean, this group of girls has been together largely since they were eight years old, and um, we've added some players along the way, and we had, we've had some real, Casco has had some great success at the Tier 2 level. And we just kind of felt this year would be a good opportunity to try to dip our toe into the Tier 1 level. And we ended up winning the Regional Tournament. And, and, and you know, we played in, 
you know, arguably the toughest division in the entire country in the New England Girls Hockey League. And you know, we took our lumps and, and we learned some things and, and we kind of were peaking at the right time and we won the New England Regionals, so now we get to go to the Tier 1 Nationals. This has been so much fun. Like, I've been playing with these girls since I was like around four, so we've never been able to do something like this and we're the first team from Maine to be able to play at this high of a level, so it's been really exciting and we've had a blast too. So. All right, wishing them the best of luck. That is all the time we have for sports, though. Here is your full five-day forecast. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Big Pine Painting, the number one family-owned and operated painting company serving Bangor and Belfast and surrounding areas. For all your paint, drywall, and pressure washing needs, call today for your free estimate. Okay, so here we go. Eclipse, of course, one week from today. Everyone's wondering, well, what's the weather going to be like? Well, here is the path of totality pretty much across the U.S., and we are not the only ones to see this. Starts off in Texas, through Waco, through Dallas, of course, Texarkana, up toward Little Little Rock and Jonesboro. Uh, lots of people are going to see this actually. 35 million plus will see this in the path of totality. And then here we are in Dayton, over toward Akron and Cleveland, right over Lake Erie, by the way. There is Buffalo and Syracuse. And here we are entering our neck of the woods. It's going to be amazing. Again, a week from today, totality right over the state before it takes off into parts of Canada. Now, we're wondering probably what's the historical weather like. Well, here are the last pretty much uh, 10 uh, April 8th, right? So you can see now what it's been like weather-wise across our neck of the woods. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy. So again, they kind of roll the dice. But our forecast right now is actually a pretty good one with a large storm system getting in here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then potentially clearing out, though, for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of next week. Okay, 52 here in Bangor today, 50 Millinock and 48 from our harbor. We'll take it. Spring-like temperatures across the area. That trend is going to continue. Here's the outlook now for pretty much the next two weeks or so well above average temperatures across our neck of the woods. And then beyond that, the spring outlook is out as well. Take a look at this. This is for April, May, and June. Above average temperatures across the Great Lakes and Northeast here, of course. Uh, that could keep temperatures well above the averages around here. Okay, so first though, a system to get through. Out there today, nothing bad. Some high clouds out there, a couple of sprinkles, a few flurries tonight. That will not be a big deal at all. The bigger deal is over here to the west of us. This thing has a ton of energy, a ton of moisture, and once it gets here, it's going to have a lot of wind in there as well. We have quite a weather system to get through late Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tonight, no issues at all. Here's tomorrow, 7 o'clock or so, looking good still. Here's Wednesday morning. We're still just fine, but by Wednesday evening, clouds increasing, snow developing up along east of the coastal areas as well, down east areas too, and that snow continues late Wednesday night through Thursday into Thursday evening, and now now we're into Friday, more snow on Friday, uh, some backside slush in there as well before it finally pulls out of here Friday evening. Already winter storm watches are in effect for the area for later Wednesday, Thursday into Friday for snow in anticipation of snow. And again, this could be a really heavy snow across our region. Our forecast then for tonight though is lots of clouds out there, sprinkles and flurries, low temperatures down near 30 for tomorrow. All right, partly cloudy, high temperatures reaching for 50. We might do it with that north breeze around 5 to 15. And looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows the calm for the storm tomorrow into Wednesday. Late-day rain changing to snow Wednesday night. Heavy snow Wednesday night into Thursday through Thursday. Uh, snow locally heavy through Thursday. Lingering a bit of rain and snow on Friday. And then here's the weekend with temperatures near 40. All right, so another active week ahead. No, oh, that's putting it mildly. <laughs> All right, there's still more to come. Stay with us. Your local professional eco-friendly office space partner is Levesque Business Solutions, your one-stop shop to get the job done. Handling all your office furniture and printing machine needs at an affordable price. Offering full system integration into your workplace and local service on everything we sell. We can even remote monitor your system with just-in-time inventory and service need assessments. Little to no downtime gives you peace of mind. At Levesque Business Solutions, your solution is only an email or a phone call away. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. 
For parts, service, or sales, stop in the Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. The Flex Steel Spring Semi Annual Sale is in full bloom. With fresh savings on fabric and leather reclining and stationary furniture, tables, beds, desks, dressers, and more. Furniture that comforts, furniture that endures, all with a blue steel spring at its core. Flex Steel, designed for living, built for life. Save big today during Flex Steel Spring Semi Annual Sale. Dorsey Furniture, open seven days a week, Route 1A Holden. Dear Savvy Traveler, airline food isn't what it used to be. I need to fuel up before I fly. Dear Hangry, you can fill up before takeoff at Bangor International Airport. The Highlands Cafe has quick and casual. The Refueler Pub and Grill has heartier fare. And the Post Security Cafe, other side of TSA, offers a pick-me-up before wheels up. Bon appétit and bon voyage, Hangry. And remember, the Savvy Travel through Bangor International Airport. Flybangor.com. Well, in other Eclipse news, with one week before the big event, the city of Niagara Falls in New York State has actually already declared a state of emergency. The city lies directly in the path of totality where the moon is expected to mask the sun's face for just over three minutes. And local officials are concerned that with an expected one million visitors, the eclipse will, cre it will create traffic jams and strain emergency services. The last time the area saw a total solar eclipse was back in 1979. Horses found in less than ideal living conditions are getting a new lease on life thanks to a rescue and rehabilitation center in Wyndham. As Jody Hersey tells us, the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animals works day and night to provide food, shelter, and veterinary care for these horses until they can be rehomed. The horses that are here really are horses who have fallen through the cracks for a variety of reasons. When horses are neglected, abused, or found to be living in unfavorable conditions, law enforcement and local animal control officers will bring them here to the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animals in Wyndham. So we rescue, rehabilitate, and ideally rehome horses, donkeys, and mules. Horses just like this quarter horse cross named Cherry. At the time she came in, her feet were overgrown. She had no boots, no shoes, no support for her feet, so she was having a really hard time walking. Jeff Greenleaf is the operations manager at the MSSPA. I don't like the horses when I'm picking them up, seeing the situations they come from, but knowing that they're coming here and getting everything they need, that's the best part of the job. This nonprofit, which receives no state funding, provides food, shelter, and all the veterinary services these animals need as they convalesce and heal. So when they come here, um, we like to think that their luck changes. Three of the horses from the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animals are now living here in Orrington at Raining Hope Ranch. This is the new home for Trip, Amir, and Leo. The participants have they, they love them all. Raining Hope Ranch provides equine assisted therapy to adults and children with diverse backgrounds. I hadn't anticipated when I started this organization to be using rescue horses so much. It has provided a, an unexpected benefit to both the horses and the participants in our program because there's so much relatability between their paths. However, not all the horses treated at the MSSPA can be adopted or rehomed. When that occurs, the animals are allowed to live permanently at the MSSPA for the remainder of their days. In Wyndham, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Well, when I lived in southern Maine, I had the extreme good fortune of volunteering at the MSSPA, wow. and it is just the most wonderful, uplifting place you can imagine it is so wonderful there and they work tirelessly for those horses. It's just extraordinary. Yeah, you know, just getting a glimpse there. It's it really seems like that's the case hearing mm -hmm. from the people who work there. Mm -hmm. You can tell how passionate they are and uh, horses uh, they're such majestic animals and so so glad to see uh, that there there is something like that for them here. There's a real spirituality about them for sure and love that there's a connection to our region as well. Exactly, yeah. Alrighty, folks, well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at ABC 7 News, take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone. Thank you.